Good afternoon. Uh, I want to have a small Bible study this afternoon. Uh, I want to talk about covenants. I want to talk about God's word. Most of us, most of us have heard about the Old Testament. We've heard about the New Testament. We've heard about grace. And so what this Bible study, hey, Mimi, uh, what this Bible study is about is clarifying exactly what the old covenant is or was and what the new covenant is and what is grace. You know, I'll be honest and tell you that even when I started preaching, I really wasn't studying my Bible. I was going off of what people had told me. And so that's the reason that we have these Bible studies is because if you don't know, you just don't know. And nobody's trying to be uh, super Christian. Nobody's trying to know more than other folks. We just want right direction so that we can uh, uh, teach other people the right thing. And so we can do the right thing ourselves. The Bible talks about three groups of people. If you look at 1 Corinthians, uh, the 10th chapter, in the 32nd verse, it talks about not giving offense to the Jew, the Gentile, nor the church of God. There's Jewish uh, people which come from Abraham. The Gentiles are everybody beside the Jew. And the church of God is the body of Christ. And we know that we, you get into the body of Christ by believing the gospel, not by going up, taking a seat, not by paying tithes, not by joining church, not by uh, snotting and crying, telling God what you're not going to do anymore. You get into the body of Christ by believing the, by, the gospel. That's found in 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, verses 1 through 4, where Paul says that I give unto you that which I received, how that Christ died for our sins, was buried, and was resurrected on the third day. And so then I, I hear people telling other folks, say, repent, uh, take, uh, 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 tell God that you're sorry about your sins, uh, come up and, and, and accept Jesus as your Lord, and all these things, which w none of them will save you. The only thing that will save you is by you believing that what Jesus Christ did upon the cross pays your sin debt once and for all. When you do that from your heart, then the spirit of God takes you and uh, translates you out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. You actually, by grace, you uh, uh, vicariously go with Christ to the cross. You die with him, you're buried with him, and you're resurrected with him. Now, what is the Old Covenant or uh, the Ten Commandments? Uh, are we up under the Ten Commandments? Uh, it says, do not lie, do not steal. Uh, where did it come from? Well, God had a chosen people that came from Abraham. Uh, Abraham had a son called Isaac. Isaac had a son called Jacob. And Jacob had 12 sons. When you get the 12 tribes of Israel, which it was really 13 because it was 11 tribes. And then you had two half tribes. But anyway, they call it 12 tribes of Israel. So then, if we look at Exodus, the 19th chapter, and if you don't have time while I'm doing this, you can always come back. It's going to be uh, posted on my timeline. But we want to be thorough in our understanding because God says, with all that getting, get an understanding. We've been hollered and hooped at enough. I want to get an understanding. Uh, and, and like I said, not something to put anybody else down, but just getting the truth. And so I'm going to give you scriptures and you take it, uh, read it and come to your own conclusion. In Exodus, the 19th chapter, the Bible says, I'm starting at the first verse. The Bible says in the third month, when the children of Israel will come forth out of the land of Egypt, the same day came they into the wilderness of Sinai. For they were departed from Rephidim and would come to the desert of Sinai and had pitched in the, in the wilderness. And there Israel camped before the mount. And Moses went up unto God and the Lord called unto him out of the mountain saying, Thus shalt thou say unto the house of Jacob and tell the children of Israel, You have seen what I did unto the Egyptians and how I bore you on eagle wings and brought you unto myself. Now then, the children of Israel were in bondage. They were in Egypt. They were up under hard taskmasters. They cried out, Moses, God sent Moses. He had been on the backside for 40 years. God sent Moses to deliver the children of Israel. Then they come to the Red Sea. When they come to the Red Sea, God had a lesson to teach them that they did not get. They came to the Red Sea, 
and God showed them their powerlessness. You see, beloved, you cannot understand God. You cannot serve God until you are disabled because when you're disabled, then you don't trust in your flesh and you don't trust in yourself. You wholly lean and depend upon God. So God bringing them out, he brings them to the Red Sea where it's too much water for the best swimmer to swim. They got mountains on both sides. They've got their past coming up behind them, which is Pharaoh changed his mind and he was coming behind them. And so then when they get there, uh, God tells them to stand still and watch the salvation of God. You see, God, God works alone. Whatever God does for us, he does not do in conjunction with us. God does it himself because uh, whatever we do, we mess it up. And so he says here in Exodus chapter uh, 19 in uh, verse 4, he says, You have seen what I did unto the Egyptians and how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you unto myself. You see, beloved, when you begin to understand God, you look back over your life and you can see where that it was just his mercy and his grace that brought you out because you had messed up so bad. You had become so despondent. You had become so depressed. You had lost all resources and God himself took you. The old people used to put it like this. They said he will make a way out of no way. I, yes, he will. And so God says, you saw what happened, how the, the water was there, but I took you up on eagle wings and I bore you. He took them through the Red Sea, through dry land, and took them to the other side. But watch this. In verse 5, he says, now, therefore, if you will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant. What was a covenant? What is a covenant? A covenant is literally a contract. God has had contracts. God has had covenants with very various amount of people in the Bible. He had a covenant with Noah, where he said that he would not flood the land anymore. Uh, he had a covenant with Abraham, where he said, through you, all people of the earth will be blessed. He had a covenant uh, with David, where he said that through your lineage will come the Messiah. He had a covenant, the Palestinian covenant, where he says, this land, shall always be yours. Nobody can take it from you, and they're in the land today. But now, he also has the covenant, the Old Testament, what we call the Old Testament, what we're talking about now in Exodus 19, and then there is the new covenant. Now, beloved, <laughs> the old covenant is the only one that was between God and man, and it's the only one that failed, because man cannot keep his word. As Paul says in Romans, the seventh chapter, the very thing that I said that I'm not going to do, I find myself doing. Oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me? And so then man was not able to keep this covenant. That's man's problem all the time. Man thinks he's something that he really not. And when, that's the reason that some, some man gets so messed up when death comes or when sickness comes, cancer or whatever, because he can he been thinking he had some power that he really didn't have. So he asked them, he said, if you'll keep my covenant, I'm in uh, Exodus 19 and uh, fifth verse, then you shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all, above all people, for all the earth is mine. Look at verse six. And you shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. A priest is one that takes the people to God. A prophet is one that goes and get a word from God and bring it to the people. So then the nation of Israel was to be a kingdom of priests. They were the ones to, that knew the true and living God. And so they were to take this information out to the Gentiles, out to the heathens. They were to be representatives of God. They were to be a holy nation. They would be a nation that was set apart, that was sanctified. They were not supposed to uh, serve Baal. They were not supposed to serve Asherah. They were not supposed to go a whoring after other gods. But we know what happened because man cannot keep his word. Man is not faithful. Ain't nobody faithful but God. We haven't been able to keep anything. We done messed up our jobs. We messed up our families. We messed up our relationships. We messed up everything that we've done. We can't. So then God was trying to show man. You see, the law was a schoolmaster to bring man under God. God must disable you before he can use you. I tell people all the time, God will, God will bless you, but he first got to embarrass you. 
God got to show you that you're not who you think you are. And we, you know, we, and because of pride, that's the reason that pride is, is, is so bad. And, and he says he gives grace to the humble. You see, but this is, we're talking about the old covenant, the new covenant and grace. And we've been told that we were up under the new covenant, but I'm going to show you that we are not under the old covenant. We are not under the new covenant, but we are simply up under God's grace. We have not entered into an agreement with God. God, when he shed his blood and through his blood, he, pay, he paid the price in order for us to be released from the law and to be married to another. And now we are members of the body of Christ. We are in Christ. We are a new creation. We live by faith. And so look what the Bible says in verse uh, Exodus 19, verse 7. The Bible says, and Moses came. Uh, no, no, no. I want to finish verse 6. He says, and you shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. Verse 7. And Moses came and called for the elders of the people and laid before their faces all these words which the Lord commanded him. Verse 8. And all the people answered and said, all that the Lord has spoken, we will do. And Moses returned the words of the people unto the Lord. Now, what should the nation of Israel have done? The nation of Israel should have told God, God, we can't keep this. We can't keep this covenant. We need you. If you don't help us. And he starts, his little, he starts out talking to them. He said, you see how that I took you. When, Israel, when, when Egypt was trying to kill you, I took you and bore you in the eagle wound. I did for you what you couldn't. And that's the reason that it's so, that it's so bad when you forget who God is. When you start thinking that you're somebody and you forget who God is. When he took Israel, when they got through wondering because of their unbelief, and he began to take them into the promised land, he told them this one thing, beloved. He said, look, I'm going to give you a land where they're, they're, you're going to eat from trees that you didn't plant. You're going to live in houses that you didn't build. The only thing that I ask you is, don't forget the, I'm happy right now, don't forget the God that brought you. You, you don't have to be all that smart. You, you don't have to be no Bible scholar. You, you don't have to have matriculated at the best seminary. But all you have to do is have faith. Lean and depend upon God, no matter what it looks like. Put your hope and your trust in God. Because when you trust in yourself, self will let you down every time. The old covenant was a schoolmaster to show man that he could not maintain a relationship with God. That's the reason we have this foolishness. We have these revivals that come in and come out and, and whatever. Like that's going to make, I want to get closer to God. I want to rededicate myself. I want to do, look, baby, you, <laughs> without faith, it is impossible to, you got to take God at his word. I don't care how raggedy your life is. I don't care how you are messed up. God is who he said that he is. The Bible said that he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. We're trying to serve God carnally. We're trying to serve God with our flesh. We're trying to see something, but the just shall live by faith. We walk by faith and not by sight. It makes no difference what happens. God still is who he says he is. I got the same testimony that the three Hebrews had. But then that was, they told him, he said, you know what? If God don't deliver us, he, he's still able. God got something better for me. Anytime I don't get something, it's because God has something better for me. So this is the Old Testament. But now, look over in Jeremiah, the 31st chapter, and the 13th verse, we all agree that God made the Old Testament with the nation of Israel. But where we have been taught wrong, we've been taught that the New Testament was with us. But all I'm saying is, let's look at what the Bible says. Jeremiah 31, verses 31 start and through 34, the Bible says, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant. Now, when you make a new covenant, the old one is no good anymore. If you make a new will, the old will is no good no more. You may have supposed to get this and that, but if they come up with a new will after the testator dies, then you don't, the, old, the old one's no good. So God himself said, I'm going to make a new covenant. I'm in Jeremiah 31 and 31. If you come back and you go through the scriptures and look for yourself, look what the Bible says. Behold, the days come, says the Lord, that I will make a new covenant. Look who he says he makes it with, with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Beloved, that blew my mind. 
because I had been taught all my life that God made a new covenant agreement with the church, with me. But he, the Bible says he made it with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, which I am not a part of either one of those. I'm a, I was a Gentile, but now I'm a member of the body of Christ. Look what he says in verse 32. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. God took Israel by the hand and brought them out. But then, you know, you ever had a kid where when they was humble and small, you get ready to cross the street, you could get their hand and take them across. But then when they get a little old, my granddaddy used to say, smelling themselves and everything, they tell you, they, don't hold my hand. I, I can go by myself. And that he tried them. In Exodus 19, he said, you saw how I brought you over, but now this is what you got to do to maintain them. Can you do this? They said, we can do it. They didn't have enough humility to tell God the truth, to tell God like the old Baptist deacon said, Lord, if you don't help me, I ain't going to be able to stand the storm. I'm, I'm so glad today I can tell the Lord, Lord, I can't stop lying. God, I, I can't stop stealing. God, I can't stop sinning. I can't do it, and I'm so glad it's in the Bible. Romans, the seventh chapter and the 18th verse says, we know that in us, that is in our flesh, dwelleth no good thing. Uh-uh. I can do something good and let you don't appreciate it like I want to. You'll see something ugly. You ever acted like you thought you would never? I, I, Lord have mercy. I, I wouldn't have thought I would have acted like that. Well, you are, you, you're going against what, what Paul says in Philippians, the third chapter. He says, we are not as those that have confidence in the flesh. Beloved, it's a beautiful thing when you realize there ain't nothing to you. When you realize that you nothing and God is everything, when you realize that if God don't help you, ain't no telling what you might say, ain't no telling what you might do or whatever because I'm dealing with me. You see, God never meant for me to lean to my own understanding. God never meant for me to live trying to get strong, trying to do this or what. No, 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 no. God, God, that's the reason that he went to the cross. He took this flesh to the cross that it would die and be buried and be resurrected a new creation. So we see that the old covenant was a result of Israel's pride. And so uh, they said we can do it. But God said in Jeremiah 31, not according to the covenant that I made with your fathers, 31 and 32, 30, 31, 32. When I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break. I'm in the 32nd verse. Although I wasn't husband to them, saith the Lord. It wasn't never the fault of God. God been good to us all days of our life. That, that ain't enough to make you act right, beloved. I heard that. I heard that in church. for so It kept me sick. It kept me messed up. Good as God been to you. Look like you wouldn't do what you do. I can't help myself. What The very thing I say I ain't going to do, I find myself doing. Paul says in, in, in Romans 7, he says, I can sing with my mind. I ain't no fool. I know what's right. You, I, I, ain't, I ain't never needed a preacher to tell me what was right. I knew what was right. I just couldn't do right. And I'm so glad that I started reading my Bible and I found out that that's just how it is. He says, Paul says, with my mind, I can sing that the law is good. The law is right. But he said, I find in my members, I got a virus in my members, which is sin. That when I seek to do good, evil is present with me. And that's the reason that I have to live by faith. And I got to reckon myself as dead and not walk according to my strength or my ability. You see, his strength is made perfect through my weakness. God has never, it freed me, y'all. It freed me because I felt worthless. I felt like I, I can't get it right. I felt like God was mad at me. I felt like that, that, that I, I just wasn't going to never make it. I didn't know that in his strength is made perfect in my weakness. The fact that I'm weak, the problem is, is that I didn't know that God don't need no help. When I quit trying to help God and I recognized that what God said, I came into agreement with God. God, there ain't nothing good in me. And so, therefore, I'm going to believe that you coming down in your, and putting on flesh and going to the cross and dying, you took my sin to the cross. You did for me what I couldn't do for myself. I promise you, y'all, I wanted to do right. I don't care what nobody say. I don't care what nobody say. I, you look at me and condemn me. I wanted to do right. God had been so good to me. I wanted to please God. But I was trying to please him in my flesh instead of by faith. You see, 
The Bible says in Romans 6 and 14, for yet sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but you are under grace. So we want to contrast these three things, the old covenant, the new covenant, and grace. We've seen the old covenant has these laws of condemnation. All that they do is condemn you. They don't give you no power to keep it. But look what he says in Jeremiah 31. 31. We're moving on. I'm going to leave you alone. He says in verse 33, but this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. This is Jeremiah 31 and 33. He is not making a covenant with the church. He's not making a covenant with Gentile. He's not making a covenant with the body of Christ. And so and I'm so glad that God blessed me to read the Bible and to get an understanding because then it only makes sense when you read it and you take it for what it says. God has not made a new covenant with me. There's no. So he says here, after those days, saith the Lord, this is the new covenant that God made with Israel. I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be their God and they shall be my people. God is not taking his law and put it in my inward parts. He has not wrote it in my heart. I'm not a part of that, but he is doing that. He, he's going to do that for Israel. Once Israel is restored, they've been set aside at this time because they rejected their Messiah. But this is what God in the new covenant, what God is going to do. How do you know it? Look over in 1 John, which talks to Israel when Israel is restored. He says that they're not going to have no sin. They can do no sin because his law is within them. But God has not given us that power. I'm saved, but I still can sin. I still do sin. So that cannot be me. And, but you know what we do? We, we take stuff and, and turn it around and make it like we want to say. So what I was taught all my life was, well, what it means that is you don't sin all the time. But that ain't what it says. What the word says is they cannot sin because his word abideth in him. So look what he says here in, uh, I'm still in Jeremiah 31 and 34. He says, and they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother saying, know the Lord. For they shall all know me from the least of them to the greatest of them, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and will remember their sin no more. Now, again, go to 1 John 2 and 27. The Bible says you have no need that any man teach you. For the anointing that you have received, 1 John 2, 27. For the anointing that you have received shall teach you all things. Beloved, we have to study. Paul tells the church to study, to show thyself. I could not teach you this if I had not studied Ain't no anointing. Ain't nothing just fell on me where I know this right here. I had to study diligently in order to rightly divide the word and get an understanding. And then, as the Bible says, as you are, to go teach other men. That's what I'm doing. But these folks that are, are members of the new covenant, they ain't not, they're not going to have any need for any man to teach them because God himself is going to teach them. Can you see the difference between the new covenant and being under grace? Upon the grace, we have to study. But the New Testament, the new covenant, uh, God himself is going to teach them from the least unto the greatest. Look at Hebrews, the eighth chapter. In Hebrews, the eighth chapter, God delineates and shows the difference between the old covenant and the new covenant. He's trying to show them. Okay, uh, let me see. Go, let's go to in, uh, Hebrews, the eighth chapter, and the sixth verse. The Bible says, but now have he obtained a more excellent ministry. It's contrasting between the priests of Israel, how they used to bring gifts. They brought the blood of bulls and goats, which could only cover sin. They had to come back the next year on Yom Kippur. They had to come back on the Day of Atonement and offer some more blood of bulls and goats. But Jesus, being a more excellent uh, high priest, being the spotless lamb of God. I'm in Hebrews, the eighth chapter. You come back and, and you can study with me. Hebrews, the eighth chapter, uh, and it's in the fourth verse. No, the sixth verse. For, but now have he obtained a more excellent ministry by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant. The old one, he, he put that aside because they break it. They couldn't keep it. So God gives them a new covenant. And now look at this new covenant, what it says. By how, by how much also he is the mediator of better covenant, which was established upon better promises. 
uh, verse 7. For if that first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second. You see, so why are they still bringing up the old covenant when God has rejected it and put it to the side? The reason, beloved, is, is because the God of this world, Satan, Satan wants to deceive you. And that's the only reason that I'm on here because I just, beloved, we are so biblically illiterate and we have been taught wrong. And I, you know, and I, I know not, not only uh, uh, are we ignorant, but many of us are apathetic. Many of us don't care. So, you know, my, this page, my broadcast, what I do it for, I do it for the people who care because everybody don't care. You know, and, and I learned that a long time ago. I learned that every, everybody black ain't my brother. If, if, you, if you want to just look at us as nothing and we're not supposed to try to do no better or whatever, you're not my brother. And, and you know what? And if you don't want nothing in life, I can't hang with you. I can't run with you or nothing because God has put a hunger in my, I want to live better. I know what it's like on the other side. I know what it's like when you don't know no better. But you know what? When God has opened your eyes, if you, you should try to do better when you know better. And that's what that's all I'm trying to do is find the truth. I'm not trying to influence anybody to take what I said. I give you a scripture. You take the scripture. And if it doesn't mean that to you, it doesn't mean that to you. But at least look to see. So he says in verse seven, I'm in Hebrews eighth chapter. If that first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second. For finding fault with them, he said, behold, the day comes, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with with who? With the church, with First Baptist, with Manasseh? No, no, no. I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of Egypt. Because they continued not in my covenant and I regarded them not, saith the Lord. Verse 10, for this is the covenant that I will make with, with who? The church? No, with the house of Israel. After those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts and I will be to them a God and they shall be to me a people. The only covenant that will, that, that will work is where God makes a covenant with himself. Any covenant that he makes with us is going to fail. Look at verse 11. And they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother saying, know the Lord for all shall know me from the least to the grace for I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their iniquities, I will remember no more. In that he saith, a new covenant. He have made the first old. The new put away the old covenant. But beloved, you go to church and they still want to put you back up under the law. Uh, the law is a yoke. The law is a bondage. The, the, the law is a ministry of condemnation. It was written in stone. It was not, but God said that he, in the new covenant for the nation of Israel, he was going to write his laws in their hearts where they could keep them. Because you see, the thing, the truth of the matter is, is that we can't do nothing. We need God to do for us what we can't do for ourselves. Look what he says in the 13th verse. And I'm in Hebrews 8. In that he saith a new covenant, this is with the nation of Israel, he hath made the first old. Now that which is decayeth and wax of old is ready to vanish away. So then, the old covenant was put aside, and it, once that Jesus uh, died upon the cross, his blood was the payment. Remember when he went to the upper room and he told them uh, as he drank, he said, this is the payment, this is the blood of the new covenant. And so this is the new agreement with the nation of Israel. And so then he made them a bona fide offer to walk into the kingdom. But what happened? Israel rejected. Israel rejected the Messiah. Even when Pilate told them, he said, behold, thy king. Israel said, we have no king but Caesar. But Pilate, we don't want him. But crucify this man. And so then when they rejected him, then God turned. And, and instead of him coming back with the tribulation, he saved a little Jew down there in Acts the ninth chapter, uh, and he made him an example because, you see, Paul was not going uh, to do God's will. Paul was going to put men, women, boys, and girls in prison, and God saved him as a pattern. You see, there's the old covenant, there's the new covenant, and then there's something, hallelujah, there's something called grace. 
This is where it, you get the benefit of the New, New Testament because his blood made it possible for you not to be married to the law, but now to be married to another. But we are not up under any kind of covenant. We are up under God's grace. Okay, I got Bible on it. Ephesians, the second chapter, and I promise you we're coming home. Ephesians, the second chapter says, and you have he quickened, I, in other words, made alive, who were dead in trespasses and sin, wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power in the air, Satan, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience or unbelief, among whom also we had our conversation in time past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. This is Ephesians 2 and 3. We've talked about the old covenant. We talked about the new covenant. Now we're going to talk about grace. Look what he says in Ephesians 2 and 4 to the body of Christ. But God, who is rich in mercy. Y'all, we serve a good God. We serve a mighty good God. And that's the reason I'm doing this, beloved, because they have mischaracterized God. And anytime somebody mischaracterizes another party to a relationship, it makes the relationship messed up. Look what the Bible says. Even, look at verse 5. I'm in Ephesians 2. Even when we were dead in sin, have quickened us together with Christ. You see, Christ dying upon the cross was the only thing that brings me into right relationship with God. 2 Corinthians 5, is 21 said, For God was in Christ reconciling the world back unto himself. And, and now God does not impute our trespasses unto us. But when you go to church, that's all they want to talk about is sin. All they want to talk about is living right. Well, then, if there's ain't but one preacher in, on this planet that'll tell the truth, I can't live right. I, I, if not right, right. Not the right what God talking about. God talking about 100 crossing every T, dotting every I. Beloved, I don't cuss, I don't drink, I don't, but still I sin. I still sin. And the only way that I do not sin is when I reckon these myself as dead and I allow the Spirit of God to live through me because the Spirit will produce fruit, love, joy. But my flesh, it will never produce righteousness. And so don't sit up and tell me what I need to do. That's the reason that he went to the cross to take this body to the cross where, to, where I would emerge a new creation, a new creation, not somebody that's fixed up, not somebody that's doing better. He made me a new creation. So therefore, I need new creation teaching. I need right teaching in order to live right, in order to be right. In order, I don't want to lose my wife, but if I'm not taught right, then I won't be able to help myself. I don't want my children to hate me. I want my children to love me. But that's not going to happen unless uh, uh, I get right teaching to show me how to get there. I may have the greatest desire to leave here from Forest City and go to Memphis. But if I don't have the directions, I just want to go. And so we need proper directions as saved people, as new creation. We need right teaching in order to get to the right place. But all they want to do is just talk foolishness to us and charge us. And, and then you're charging, you ain't getting nothing. And then the gospel is free. Look what the Bible says, and I'm almost through. He says in verse 4, Ephesians 2, But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, God ain't mad at me. God don't hate me. God, God is not laying traps for me. God, God is not disappointed with me. God loves me. God, look, I'm going to tell you something, beloved. I'm like Forrest Gump. I, I, might, I might be a little slow, but I know what love is. And I know what it ain't. I know what it is, and I know what it ain't. And that's the reason I had to get in the Bible and find out who God was. Because they never would have told me. Because when they tell me the truth, they can't make no money off of me. You know, you ain't got to beat me out no money. I, I'm, I'm, I love to give. But, but he says in verse 5, even when we were dead in sins. See, see, the Bible says that God, that Christ died even when we were sinners. Christ died for the ungodly. But, you know, they tell us, they say, you need to do this and you need to do that. Well, God will accept you. 
But beloved, the Bible tells me that before the foundation of the world, we were accepted in the beloved. Before I ever got here, God had accepted me. It's a bad thing when you feel like folk don't accept you. It's a bad thing when you feel like that, you know what, I don't come up to it. It's a bad thing when you feel like, well, you know, I got to fix myself up and whatever. That's what I love about going to my mama house. When I go to my mama house, I come in there any kind of way I want to. When I get ready to eat, I can eat any kind of way I want to because I'm accepted. My mama loves me. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I don't have to. I don't have to put on no show for God no more. And I sure don't have to put on no show for y'all no more. He accepted me. Look what the Bible says. Ephesians 2 and 5, he said, Even when we were dead in our sin, have quickened us together with Christ. I caught a, I caught a ride with Jesus. I ain't had no way. I caught a ride with him. He told me, he said, Son, just recognize that you can't make it. Hop on my shoulders. Come on, go with me to the cross. We'll kill this old man. The man that won't let you stand up. The man that won't let you be the man that you want to be. We'll kill him. We kill him. Do we take him to the grave? Just ride with me. But I want you to know that Friday evening wasn't the end. Because early on that third day morning, he said, well, I'm getting up with all power. I'm taking this thing out of death. Grave, I'm taking the victory from the grave. I'm going through death and I'm, I'm taking you with me. No, you ain't worthy. This ain't, I ain't no member of no covenant. I ain't made no agreement with God. I was a happy heathen. But God showed me one day that the cross and the blood that he shed was my only hope. Ain't no other way except going through him. And I caught a ride with him. That's why I call him Savior. I didn't do it on my own. I didn't save myself. And I can't lose, I can't lose my salvation myself. Uh, his blood, his blood, his blood, his blood, his blood guaranteed my salvation. I used to hear him sing a song, sing a song. They said, they, they said, that's power. That's power. That's power. There is power in the blood. Thank you, Jesus. I don't have no power. I don't have no power. What I say I ain't going to do, I find myself doing it. I, I, I got no power. I can get cancer just like anybody else. My mama can die just like anybody else. My hope is in Jesus. My hope is in Jesus. I didn't mean to do all this, y'all. I'm almost through. The Bible says here, and have raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Uh, that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his graces and the kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. And then he says in verse 8, for by grace are you saved through faith. When I put my faith in the work of the cross, the Spirit of God baptized me into the body of Christ. I didn't make no covenant. I didn't make no agreement. I didn't make no promises to God. God saved me all by himself. The book of Hebrews says, hold on just a minute, John. I'm sorry. The book of Hebrews says, says that God himself purged us of our sin. I ain't got no sin. And that's when I can't hear everybody preach. You want to preach sin? You want to preach sin? You need to talk to somebody else. He took my sins away. Oh, that's the reason that Paul was saying in Romans 8 chapter, there's therefore now no condemnation to them. That don't be trying to condemn me. I, I guess you know it's something about people. They love to put you down. They love to keep you down. Look like you're too happy. Look like you're doing too well. But that's what Paul said at the end of Romans 8. He started out with there's no, no condemnation them in Christ Jesus. Goes on to say, I'm, you know, I got to suffer. But everything that I'm suffering working together for my good. And, I, and I'm persuaded that, that all these present sufferings are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed. Then he ends it up, Sister Captain Devin on the end of it, he ends it up by saying, you know what? I'm persuaded. And so you know what? That's what I'm glad I got in this Bible. Because you see, you'll be wavering minded. See, got people trying to, trying to tell you this and trying to tell you. But Paul said, I'm persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor powers, nor principalities, nor angels, nor anything present, nor anything to come shall be able to separate. I'm happy right now. <laughs> shall be able to separate me. I got to close the book. Shall be able to separate me from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. I'm not a part of the old covenant. I ain't a part of the new covenant. I'm up under God's good grace. Good grace. No wonder they sang this song, say, Amazing Grace. 
how sweet the sound to say a wretch like me. Thank y'all for letting me uh, do this Bible study on today. There's so much false information that's out here that I'm compelled. I'm compelled to come on and to get the truth. And I'm just giving you Bible scriptures. If you look at it and you say, no, pastor, that's not what it means. That's fine. That's fine. I've been wrong enough to know I ain't right all the time. But I know the Bible said what it says. And he said we are saved by grace through faith that not of ourselves, not of works, lest any man should boast. I ain't mad at nobody. I'm happy down in my soul. I'm happy down in my soul. I'm happy because God real. This ain't no fairy tale. This, this ain't none of Santa Claus. God is real. God loved me so much that he left heaven and put on, put on flesh. And he came and died on my behalf. All I got to do is believe it. It don't make no difference who don't like you. It don't make no difference who don't want you to have it. If God be for us, he's more than the world against us. I love you. Have a great weekend.